This is chapter 22, example 2. In this problem, what we want to do is design a circuit that keeps a running total of two 8-bit unsigned binary input, and the output is stated to be 12 bits, so we don't have to worry about calculating that. The circuit's essentially going to add both those values and keep a running total on each clock edge. The idea here is this problem definitely calls out for an accumulator. So we'll get to that in a minute, but first let's draw the interface to this thing. Which we know it has two inputs. They're eight bits, and we have, we have a clock input also, and output's 12 bits, and we'll just call this C sum, so for cumulative sum, a little bit better than sum. Next step in the problem is to say, hey, well, what kind of underlying circuitry does this have? Because it's doing a, a running total, it necessarily has an accumulator. I'm going to draw that real fast. There is my accumulator. It's 12 bits wide everywhere and I opted to put it a load input on the register. I, I'm going to read this problem and I see that I will need to reset this register sometime. So this, this register needs a, a clear input also. So I'm going to go ahead and put that clear in there. So eventually, I guess I can write that in there. Is what's going to clear this is when this carryout is asserted. So we can actually do most of the problem right here. Now the issue in this problem is what we want to do is sum up A and B on one clock cycle. Now this uh, circuit as written, it only can sum one thing at a time, which is this B input. And so what we need to do is drop another ripple carry adder in front of that to add, to pre-add A and B to add to this accumulator. So essentially here's our ripple carry adder. This is my sum. And we're going to call this 12 bits, which means for this input on the ripple carry adder, we are going to have to extend the bit width on it. And so this is going to be, comes in at 8, goes in at 12. Uh, we're going to put a little note here. From 8 bits to 12 bits, so that's 4 bits. I think I'm done with this problem. The last thing uh, we need to do is check over it and see if I forgot anything, if I can make it clearer. It looks like everything's labeled and looks okay. And so the last thing is that we gotta state what controls this problem. The circuits that have control inputs is the register where there's there's the clock, and there's the load and the clear. Generally speaking, we're not gonna consider the clock to be external control on this one. We're more interested in the load and the clear. So the load's always turned on, but the clear is dependent upon this carryout. So we're gonna call this internal internally controlled. So once again, we do consider the clock signal on the register to be a control signal, but generally speaking, when we're thinking about control, we don't really consider that. It's internally controlled because of these, uh, the clear and the load on this register are connected to internal signals. And we're going to call it done.